not everybody's going to have the same setup out here, so there's a few different options on staying warm in the winter. I'm going to go over some of those options in this video, but before I do, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and ask all the questions you need and make all the comments or suggestions. You know, put your feedback in the comments if you have anything to add or say about anything that I'm going to talk about in this video. This is a way for all of us to learn, is for all of us to come together and communicate. So in the comments section, please fill it up. Do all the you know, talking you need to do. So that's what this is for, just to share information, guys. So I'm not an influencer. I'm just an information sharer. So please, everybody help out. And yeah, for let's all do the this stuff video. that I'm going to talk about in this video. There's going to be links in the description below. So if you're interested in any of these, just hit the link below. Our first option for staying warm is just a good old bundle up, cover up, and stay warm the best you can. That's just the simplest, obviously. And to start off, if you guys don't have any kind of insulation on your van, on the inside of your van, that's going to make a huge difference on your ability to stay warm in the winter. These metal vans that bear metal, whether it's in the cold or the hot, they radiate the outside temperature. So when it's cold, you can put your hand near the walls and you can feel that cold just coming off of there. So you're going to want to insulate it somehow. Uh, some of the simplest ways I've seen, the simplest thing I've seen somebody do is moving blankets. They went and bought a bunch of cheap moving blankets and just, you know, figured out a way to attach them to the wall. Now the second way is obviously to buy some insulation. You can get the rock wool insulation and those are like uh, rectang rectangular sections of it and I use that to put into like the cavities of the van back there then the skeleton the the cavities of the skeleton of the van and then I use uh, some insulation board to do the walls and then I have my you know Luan wood panels over it and so on but again if you're just trying to simply get by you don't have the means to really do a lot moving blankets uh, at the bare minimum get you a big a large roll of reflectix and for anybody that doesn't know reflectix it's like a uh, it's an aluminum foil looking insulation that uh, you see in people's windows a lot uh, but it, you can get that at Lowe's or Home Depot something like that you can get the large roll and just basically take that cut that you can get the uh, the HVAC tape for duct work out of there as well and tape it to the wall or you can use uh, spray. The spray doesn't seem to work as well just because in the summertime it just it, it wants to that glue wants to uh, get loose and it and the insulation will fall off. So I highly suggest the tape and get the HVAC tape. Make sure you're getting the duct tape, the an actual ducting tape for duct work in, in HVAC. So it's gonna be a silver. Now don't mistake that for the Reflectix tape because that stuff doesn't work as well. So go into the HVAC section of the store and make sure you get that silver tape there. What you're trying to do when you insulate your van is you're trying to capsulate yourself in there as best you can. So you, you want to try to cover as much of that bare metal back there as you can and kind of, kind of like I said, encapsulate yourself because you're, you're trying to keep what heat you have in you know staying in and then you're trying to keep the the cool that's out out so that's what that insulation is going to do and that reflectix is a good simple way to take care of that because i think for a large roll of that is like 50 bucks you'll probably need two rolls you you might get it done with one it just depends on how much metal you have showing i see a lot of guys with the top of the van not insulated or covered or anything and in the summer it's going to matter more than the winter but it's still a lot of that radiant temperature that's going to get into your van and it's going to affect you your ability to keep it warm or cold in the you know depending on the weather your next option is a zero degree sleeping bag those things will work extremely well a lot of people are using those a lot of people were using those when i first came out here uh, because when I first came out here, uh, a couple of the options weren't available that are available now. The zero degree or lower sleeping bags, uh, get you one. You can find them, uh, I believe you can find them at Walmart, you can go to like Cabela's, you can go to Dick's Sporting Goods, Amazon, anywhere. Just, they're, they're available pretty much anywhere. So get you a zero degree sleeping bag. Another option 
is the Buddy Heater. You can get those at Walmart. I believe you might be able to get those at the sporting goods stores as well. Uh, I had tried one at one time. I bought mine at Walmart. Uh, they come with a small individual uh, propane tank. That's what you use for refills as well. Uh, or you can get the adapter that allows you to hook up to a big 20 gallon tank I think is what it is of propane so whichever way you choose to do it uh, but it does have different uh, size tanks that you can adapt to it those things now me personally when I used it I was in a bare bones van just a bare metal van and I put it right between the seats on the floor and I had a fan behind it trying to push the heat back to me on low and all that thing did because I was sleeping on the floor with just a blanket and pillow it did not work worth a crap for me personally so I, it would probably work better if your van is insulated so I again highly suggest you insulating your van that is going to be one of the things that's going to help you tremendously uh, secondly just a side note is if you sleep on the floor you want to get you something that's going to get you up off the floor because you're sleeping down there on that metal. That metal is going to get cold in the winter, so please get yourself up off the floor. The other downside to the buddy heaters is they cause a lot of condensation on your windows on the inside. Uh, and you need to be obviously careful uh, with those things. Have a, have a detector. Have a carbon monoxide detector in your van uh, at all times. Keep your windows cracked when you're using these. Uh, I highly suggest even if you're running your van no matter what you do for heat always have uh, have your windows cracked you know to have allow some fresh air to get in the buddy heaters they're gonna run you man I want to say they used to be around a hundred bucks I don't know if they're still that price I haven't priced them in a while uh, but I will look that up and I will have that in this video I'll make sure I pop it up on this video so to show you the price now the last and to me the best option is the diesel heater whether you go with the brand names as far as the Wabasto or the S-Bar or you go with the Chinese diesel heater uh, the the Wabasto and, and S-Bar they're both foreign made as well so if, if, if it being made foreign by a foreign company affects you that's that just to let you know they all are uh, but the Wabasto and the S-Bar is going to cost you at a minimum 1500 bucks uh, at a maximum around 2500 bucks uh, depending on whether you get a new or used unit and then have it installed uh, with the Chinese heater uh, it's 170 bucks basically for the it may be, maybe 200 bucks if uh, for the for the highest priced one but I don't think they're worth it for the 200 you can get just the same quality I believe out of the 150 130 170 right in that range uh, the only difference between the Chinese diesel heater and the S-Bar Wabasto is is the quality of parts that go into the unit uh, my thinking is being I guess you could call it being cheap or whatever is that I could buy a brand new unit if had to every year for what 10 years plus and still have not paid the amount of I paid for the Wabasto or the S bar so that's that's my reasoning with going with the Chinese diesel heater they're they're just a lot more inexpensive they're easy to install uh, now if you're somebody that's not real handy you know go ahead and spend the money on the s-bar and Wabasto because you're gonna have it's gonna be less problematic if you're somebody that doesn't mind you know getting your hands dirty and knows how to do a few things turn a wrench or whatever get the Chinese diesel leader because once they're installed the, the initial installation is the most work after that it's just basically undo a couple of mounting bolts unhook the fuel line take the unit out service it or if it's totally bad you just go ahead and put the new unit in place and boom I mean you're done I mean you're talking about less than an hour's work altogether to replace one uh, and as I said you can maintenance them because that's the biggest thing that usually happens with them is the glow plugs and the little screen on the glow plugs they kind of clog up and whatnot and you just have to maintenance them so uh, yeah those are those are the last and best option for keeping one I mean to me those are an absolute game changer uh, because you can you can be in the back of your van just as you were in the spring or fall or summer I shouldn't even say summer because you may need the AC in the summer but we'll say spring and fall but you can just be back there in a t-shirt and shorts or whatnot and just uh, be able to live instead of sitting there bundled up under a blanket or in a sleeping bag the whole time or having to go inside and waste your time inside that you don't really want to but you're doing it because you're warm 
So my my suggestion, I highly suggest getting the diesel heater, what, no matter which brand you go with. Those are awesome. If you own a diesel fuel vehicle, uh, these all three of these heaters can tie into your tank. With the Chinese diesel heater, they come with an auxiliary tank. Now, what some people think of when they think about having a diesel heater, they immediately think fumes. There are no fumes. The diesel heater has an exhaust and intake on the bottom. It has an intake for fresh air on the top. Uh, you have an individual tank. The only way you're going to have diesel fuel fumes in your vehicle is if you're just clumsy and you're, you're, you're not paying attention when you're filling your tank up and you're spilling diesel fuel everywhere and don't clean it up. That's the only way. Aside from that, you're not going to have it if you're doing everything correctly. So diesel fumes is not a concern at all. As I mentioned earlier in the video, all of the things that I talked about in this video, there is a link in the description below for each of these items to uh, get access to them through Amazon. So uh, please hit the link, get yourself situated. You don't want to be out here in the winter without these things, I'm telling you. It's not as fun to be staying bundled up the whole time. Have a little bit of freedom while you're in this van. So I'll let you guys later.